everybody, Alex here, healthpacksreview.com. Thanks for watching this. This topic video is about laser therapy, so the photobiomodulation industry. The actual video that I'm going to be discussing here um, is one I did way in the past, and I'm going to have to bring it out again. Uh, it's a way for you, the practitioner, or you, the user at home, trying to get a laser, trying to discern the actual output power of the device. Okay, so I've stressed this in several videos is it's not just good enough to just say, okay, here's a 15 watt device, now let me uh, consider buying this just based off that rudimentary uh, claim of the total power. What you really need to do is get down to the component grade. So one I talked about in other videos is looking at or requesting the duty cycle, okay, uh, of the actual setting. So duty cycle, also if you're dealing with multi-wavelength, finding out the exact numbers or the distribution of the power amongst the different wavelengths. I'm not really a fan of the multi-wavelength since it does has never been proven to actually increase any sort of efficacy um, in any models. Uh, no studies on it. Okay, and really, if anything, it's going to potentially cause a diminishment in the amount of depth of penetration as you're actually reducing the amount of power going on to through uh, one beam through one diode. Uh, but now this is a really interesting thing that I'm going to mention here which is the 904-905 nanometer diodes um, that are being used by several devices. Uh, commonly used in super pulsing devices. Uh, you will see it in another very well known name brand uh, and I'm happy to discuss that over the phone if you want to know what that is but it's fairly obvious now that you know the nanometer. So how come a company might want to use that sort of diode? And when you're evaluating a laser, it's important to really assess, especially when you're dealing with a high-powered laser, which uses a lot of heat, uh, what the grade of the components are. Not all diodes are created equal. Okay, Some diodes, really, when you look at their specifications, their technical specifications from the manufacturer, all right? you'll actually see that it is only able to handle a certain range of power, okay, a certain level of joules. And so that gives you the insight if you have those numbers and you know what those technical specs are to make a very clear assessment of, okay, what is this laser actually able to produce the actual output power, the beam, how, what kind of power density is coming off of that diode, okay? So what the laser company may claim one thing, but if you have that technical spec, you know, so for example, if they say, oh, well, you know, it's uh, at the 904 nanometer, um, you're having eight, eight watts go through that or something. They just throw that number at you. That may be true, but if you look at the technical spec and you see, wait a minute, uh, a 905 nanometer diode can't even handle that amount of continuous wave power. So again, know what you're talking about here. Is it are they saying continuous wave that come through that, or are they actually pulsing that with like a 50% duty cycle or, or whatever it is? Uh, and that has to do with it staying on half the time. Half the time it's turning off. Um, so either way, you would know that they weren't being completely honest about what kind of power is actually coming through that diode. So that's something you can always request. You can say, okay, um, could you show me some sort of manufacturer? Um, uh, basic spe technical specifications on your different diodes that you're using. And so wh why are these companies using low power 904 and 905 and they are low power when you look at the technical specs you'll see they don't they just can't handle a lot of continuous wave um, or just a lot of energy in general coming out of them. Okay, The main reason they're using them because they are cheap so they're very low cost. You could have some diodes that are you know $1500 and you can have some that are $200, okay? Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of these companies are trying to, you know, they're, they're, they're in business and they're trying to really increase their margins and lower their costs. That's one good reason to basically use those type of diodes and then convince everybody that they're the most magical wavelength ever and they're the most healing. So if they are making such a claim, as always, you know what to do. I always ask uh, everybody to just say, prove it, you know, show me that 904 and 905, you know, somewhere in unbiased third-party studies really is that much more superior, okay? And they're going to have a heck of a hard time doing it. 
that's when you start to realize if you look at class four and class three, just in general, all laser studies, maybe the last 25 years or 30 years, what you'll generally find is a majority of those studies are sticking with specific types of wavelengths, okay, diodes. So ask yourself this, why would a company choose to offer certain wavelengths on their device that were wavelengths that were never used in some cases or hardly ever used in studies that wouldn't be reflective of the literature. If you have a whole bunch of studies, for example, on 810, okay, I'll just throw that one out there on nanometer, why would you choose something like, uh, you know, 802? I'm just throwing out now a random number. Do you see what I'm saying? Why not, if you're going to build a medical device or some sort of therapy device, use the one that was in all the studies or more commonly used? It's kind of, when you think about that very common sense, it, 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 it just doesn't add up. Uh, that they're actually adding something in to their device to appear different for marketing purposes. Um, that's a big part of it. And then secondly, costs. So, you know, if they can hit both marketing value, product differentiation, the appearance of it, um, as well as lower costs, then that could be a serious win-win for the company, maybe not necessarily for yourself. Uh, the practitioner or the home user. So this is a little bit of insight where it's going to be pretty hard for some of these companies to spin their marketing magic when you're requesting basically evidence in the form of clinical studies based on wavelengths they are using and then secondly asking for technical manufacturer specifications on those diodes. Some of these cheaper diodes uh, basically will cause a variety of different things. One, they'll burn out a lot quicker. Have you ever heard of some companies offering a really good warranty for lifetime replacements or something like that? Now, most most companies um, don't offer such a thing. Um, but that is one thing to keep in mind, is if a company is so ready to offer replacements, is that diode life expectancy really that good? Most good, solid, high power class four diodes can sometimes have a lifetime, a life expectancy of 10 to 30,000 hours. But I've seen several uh, different brands of lasers where people are using their lasers and having to replace those diodes within three to six months. It's actually way more common than you think for several different devices. And that is simply coming down to spectropics and optronics using cheaper diodes, period. And <coughs> it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. That may sometimes not having an adequate cooling system or at the end of the day, uh, basically using different internal components in the module uh, that were really aimed for aesthetic sorts of lasers or applications and they're using it or adapting it for musculoskeletal when it wasn't really designed for that. That's a common issue as well we see in this industry. Um, and, and for that, along those same lines, uh, those cheaper diodes might be totally okay for using for an application of just treating somebody's gums really quickly for like dental usage. Um, but now when we try to translate that to a long continuous wave treatment for musculoskeletal issues on a daily basis, there's going to be problems. Um, so a lot of these cheaper diodes, you also commonly will see um, what they call an issue with beam divergence. Um, so you almost, if you have like a focused beam in the center, over time, if you have a lot of usage that day, you can kind of have like a blurring around uh, on the edges of it. It's, it's much easier if I have a visual diagram. Um, but that would be another thing, power drop issues. Uh, so maybe after a couple hours of treatments that day, um, or this could happen on a permanent basis after a few months, you may actually not be getting the same output power that you were before. Let's say maybe you were getting uh, a couple watts coming out of there, a continuous wave, now you're getting one watt, okay? So you have a power drop. And, you know, that's another sign. This brings me to the point that very few lasers, and I can only think of a couple on the market right now, actually have the capability to actually measure the beam, so actually self-monitor. And that would be a way that you would know what was the actual output power doing and how your laser was actually performing and if you were having any issues. Uh, one reason you don't see that on many devices is simple because these companies don't want you to, of course, notice that the actual performance um, in the field at your practice or at your home is not doing that well. Otherwise, you'd be upset with what you spent and that you could have spent a large amount of money. 
Uh, there are beam meters out there, a couple thousand dollars to measure beams. Uh, there's a new one coming out that's just like 400, 500 bucks. Um, if anybody's interested in that, we're testing lasers. And then there's also a couple devices. There's, there's a manufacturer that actually builds it already into the device, so you can actually monitor it. Uh, so anyways, if anybody has any questions about this video, need a little bit more information on any sort of brands out there or models, uh, you can find me on healthhacksreview.com and I deal with all kinds of different devices as well as a lot of other things that even aren't, aren't even on that website that's currently under development. Uh, and you can find me on the contact or support page. Uh, just give me a little bit of background info of what kind of help you need and uh, I'll give you my time. So thanks for watching.